everybody, and welcome to historic Holman Stadium, scene of a high school baseball playoff game today on June 1, 2019. It's Bishop Girton versus Bedford in the quarterfinal round. I'm John Collins, along with Tom King. After what was not a beautiful spring, we're off to a nice start in June, Tom. Yeah, I said to Billy Chapman, the Bedford coach, I said, where was this weather all spring? He goes, doesn't matter, it's here today. So we get it. You know, we get <laughs> He's it. in we game had, mode. We had yeah. it for North South, too. Yeah. We had a good day for North South that Saturday afternoon oh, two yeah. weeks ago. So here we are, Bishop Girton. Now, this is a Bishop Girton team, John. It's lost four games, I think, during the regular season, four or five. Bedford is one of those losses. They beat them 13 to three. Mm. You know, and you don't know what the pitching situation was then. Don't. It was a makeup game, it was rescheduled. That throws a lot of, you know, flies in the ointment. But this is, you know, BG with this group of seniors. They're all pushing to this tournament. This is what the goal was, these two years. Last year they fell short, they got upset by Nashville North. This year they made it past that first round with a win over Manchester Central. Bedford beat Witta cut it, so here they are. And don't forget, in 2016, Bedford beat them, I think the score was 22 to four in the Ooh. finals, where there was no, there was yeah. no 10 run rule. Yeah. So this is gonna be an interesting day. Now, Little history. Steve McClendon, BG's number two, is on the mound. A little bit of a lineup change. Alex George, who normally either catches or DH, opted not to play today. Don't know why, don't know what the reason is, don't know if he's hurt, don't know for sure, but he is not in the lineup. So there goes your cleanup hitter for, wow. BJ, for BG, and who knows? Hmm. So that's the story right now. They're shorthanded already, so they moved some pieces around. They've got Brett Anderson, who normally plays first, the Gatorade Player of the Year. He's out in the outfield today. Matt Tebalt is at first base. Just a little bit of a juggling act. But McClendon, who pitched an inning the other day just to get loose. This is bullpen day. He's out there today to start in this game. And he's pitched pretty well this year. Last time I saw him pitch was against Exeter. He lost 4-1, to one, but he deserved a better fate. They didn't hit for him. And that BG, John, they're as good as they hit, like any high school team. I think yep. it, they're as good as they hit. If they hit today, they'll be fine. If they don't, I don't know. Bedford always <laughs> is a tough stumbling block. A nemesis. How, for, in all sports, in all sports, BG and Bedford in the postseason just seem to be always on a collision course, no matter what the sport is. Yes, it uh, And, you know, we're uh, caught up in the Stanley Cup finals fever excitement this time of year. But every game in the New Hampshire High School baseball playoffs is a game seven. It's one right. and done. One Single and elimination. Done. Single elimination yep. tournament. So it's always a big deal, and it's always every mistake, every pitch, every at-bat, it's always critical. And, Tom, let's not, let's not uh, beat around the bush about the, the next game. It's going to be a winner of 15 seed and a 10 seed because of the quirky stuff that happened on the other side of the bracket. Uh, against Portsmouth and Dover going at it today. This is going to be a game where if you get by it, you think you might have a path to the Cannot, final. Can never look at it that way in the baseball tournament. BG if was you're the that, coach, but if BG you're the announcer. BG was that team in 2016. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's they right. Were that, they were the low seed that and ran the table. they went the table all the way all to the right. finals where yeah. they met the juggernaut in Bedford. So you never know. You can't think that way if you're BG. But it is a big game. There's no uh, debating that. Right here in front of us, Bedford against the Bulldogs against the Cardinals. This is, a younger, to it. This is a younger Bedford team, if I'm not mistaken. They've got one, two... Three, four, five seniors on this team. They usually are loaded with seniors. BG, on the other hand, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven seniors on this roster. But the big omission, though, glaring. The big omission uh, is George. Is he won't be playing. In, no, the as senior far as we catcher. Know. Yep, exactly. Yeah, well, we'll miss him. But we'll see what Mr. McClendon has to offer today <coughs> as the big right hander throws his warm up tosses here at Holman Stadium. 311 down the right field line, 307 down the famous left field line with a low red brick wall. A nod to the old Nashua Dodgers. Bedford had a rough start to the season. They were one in five at one point. Right, and, and, they, they, and they just turned the table and recovered yeah. very quickly. And uh, Bishop Girton, much the opposite start to the season. They started 11 and 0, John, but that's the thing, 11 and 0. But over their last, you know, what, seven, eight games. They lost five four, of those. Four yeah. and five. Yeah. You know, so they've been four right. and five in their last nine games. Right. Well, actually, five and five because they won the tournament game. So they come in at 16 and five overall. 
See, I think it was a very difficult spring for the teams who had to get 20 games in on their schedule. If I'm an AD, I don't schedule 20 games after this year. That's optimistic. I just think yeah. it's too difficult to do with this weather. You know, unless you want to play every day. But you have right. pitching rules. So, you know, well, it's baseball. You can do it. But, but the ones who play every day don't have pitching rules. And you've got innings, innings rules. So that's, that's, the, that's the difference. Yes, sir. So here we go. All set. Bedford will lead off the visiting team role in this one. A seven-inning contest scheduled for. Of course, they will play extras if tied at the end of seven. And, and Master McClendon's first pitch bounces in the dirt and goes to the backstop for ball one. Lead-off hitter for Bedford is their center fielder, Michael Pratt, wearing number 12, left-handed batter. He's got a 1-0 count in his favor. 2.05 game start time here, right on the outside corner with the paint. One and one is the count. McClendon working quickly. Hard hit grounder at the shortstop. Up with it to first in plenty of time. And Pratt is retired. Solid fundamental play at short by Aiden Coyne who will also be the leadoff batter when it's Bishop Girton's time to bat. So, taking that pitch from Stephen McClendon to the left side of the infield, Pratt is retired on four pitches. And a strike, kind of a two-seamer with some tail action. Two left-handed batters to start the game for the Bulldogs. And jackknifing away from what looked like a slider was the second baseman for Bedford, Zach Fletcher. That just missed the outside corner. Must have been low, actually. It was over the plate, but down. And it's two balls in one strike. As Stephen McClendon's working both sides of the plate. That one's low also. Three balls in one strike to the two-hitter in the order for Bedford. Top of the first inning, one out. Bishop Girton playing Fletcher straight away at all positions. Ground ball toward the first baseman. And a easy play, unassisted. Two ground balls to begin the game. And Trevor Anibal, the shortstop for... Uh, actually, Trevor Anibal is the second baseman. Can't go by the numbers on the back. Um... Like I just did. Ground ball toward the hole and into left field for a base hit. First yep. pitch swinging and a ball. But three ground balls, which means McClendon's yep. getting the ball down low. So that's big for him. Yeah, he's definitely being right around the plate. Now just with about the, everything. Now with the cleanup hitter up, do you try to possibly steal? Or, and take the bat out of his hands, maybe. Have him, not a bad thing to have him lead off, but you'd rather have him at, at the plate with a runner at second. Jared Nykum, another left-handed batter for Bedford. They've had three out of the first four top of the order hitters bat in the left-handed batter's box. McClendon working that outside corner to the lefties with some success up in the count 0-1 as he peeks over his shoulder. And Anibal, it does not go. That was a changeup that faded away. It was well off the plate, but Nykum chased it. And you got to be careful here at 0-2. So. Yeah. Very modest also, lead over at first. Ground ball toward the second baseman. Steps on the bag to end the inning. So couldn't be any easier. No, it? four ground balls and three outs. They exactly. strand a runner. And, and get the cleanup hitter off the books. That's right. For the next inning. So four up and three down, and we go to the bottom of the first. No score here at Holman. John Collins along with Tom King welcoming our Bedford viewers on BCTV. There was a game played at 11 o'clock this morning in this round, in this tournament, and Londonderry defeated Concord, uh, excuse me, Pinkerton 4-1. to one. So Pinkerton was eliminated by Londonderry, the four-seed 
over the five seed. So Londonderry will advance to play the winner of Concord Goffstown, which will happen later this afternoon. They had that result on the website before 1 p.m., which indicated that 11 a.m. game, Londonderry versus Pinkerton was less than two hours to play the seven innings. Uh, probably a credit to the pitching and the defense. As we get our first look at the Bedford pitcher, Blake Murray, who wears number 15. He's a right-hander. I've seen the ball kind of kind of a funky delivery coming out of his hand in the warm-ups here. It looks like almost a, a knuckleball grip. He's um, kind of shot-putting it toward home, some of these pitches, that is. That's it again. It's very funky release of the ball. It almost looks like it's coming off the top of his knuckles. That, that one was high, but that had something on it. So he does have a fastball. Something to think about for the on-deck batter, who in this case will be Aiden Coyne, the BG shortstop, batting leadoff here for the Cardinals. Coin right-handed batter. Will be followed in the lineup by Stephen McClendon and Brett Anderson. Quarterfinal round. Bishop Girton earning their way here with a 6-2 win over Central on Thursday. Coin ahead in the count 2-0 to begin the bottom of the first. And Bedford with a very impressive first round victory over Winnicott 10-0. Top toward third, and way out in front was Coyne. He was obviously swinging away on the 2-0 pitch, but not the ideal 2-0 uh, pitch I think you look for, which would be maybe a, a fastball, something straight middle. That was a change-up looking thing away. That one's way outside. An easy take for Coyne, and he's ahead in the count. Three balls and one strike, so back to the same mindset probably that he had on 2-0, although... He is just one pitch away from drawing a leadoff walk, and he gets it. Another easy take for Coyne that was way outside, and he's on board. Aiden Coyne with good speed aboard in a 0-0 game at this point. Now here is Stephen McClendon, the pitcher, starting pitcher in today's game, batting in the two spot in the order, also a right-handed batter, and he Looks at a ball in the dirt. So struggling with his control at the moment. Blake Murray is going to get a mound visit. Kyle Levine is catcher going out to the hill to talk to his pitcher. Levine towering over his right-handed teammate as he trots back behind home plate. Levine looks like he's towering over everybody. Number 24 behind the dish. Bedford's defense playing McClendon slightly to pull in center field, but that's about the only hint of a shift in the defensive alignment as McClendon takes one on the upper outer corner for a strike. One ball and one strike. Down, down the right field line, a little bit late on the swing, but nearly produced great results. It's a foul fly. Goes well beyond the bullpen here at Holman Stadium, which will be home to the Nashua Silver Knights for the 2019 summer season. Very soon, very shortly. Pitch is way outside for a ball. In fact, June 4 is going to be a very busy day here coming up on Tuesday. they got the annual Education Day game. A lot of school kids will be in attendance for the Nashua Silver Knights. And then Holman will host the semifinals, plural, as there will be a game at 4 and a game at 7. The winner of this game will play the 4 o'clock contest against the winner of Dover-Portsmouth, which is also going on today, but a little bit later at 4 o'clock. Throw to first base. That was kind of a unusual 
delivery to first base. And a whipping it around his body without turning all the way by Murray. Takes a peek. There goes the runner. He's got a decent jump. That's going to be lofted to right. If he catches it, it's a double play. Instead, it drops. And in between was Murray. And I tell you, in that situation, when you are going to be dead to rights at first base anyway, if it's caught, you might as well keep going to third. And you can see Aiden Coyne tapping his chest as if to say, my mistake on that. I should be at third. And he should be. A better read, too, on a Texas leaguer to right field. He would have seen that Bedford's right fielder had no chance to catch that. And it's first and second now with nobody out. Instead of first and third, we'll see if that plays any role in plating a run here for the Cardinals. But they have a great opportunity with their three-hitter up there to do some damage early in this one. Fouled back to the backstop. A little bit anxious there on a pitcher's pitch. Was the three-hitter Brett Anderson, healthy hack for the left fielder for the Cardinals. Not the greatest pitch to, to drive. Well placed by Murray. The 1-1 one -one on the way. Ground ball toward the second baseman. They could get two. Throw to second for one to first base. Safe at first. Good hustle by Anderson. A very close play. That's a play that if it was at the major league level, they would definitely take a look at it just to see if the umpire got it correct. Nobody's arguing the call at all, and I think he did just eyeballing it from this distance up here in the Holman press box. So nicely turned by Bedford, just great hustle by Bedford's three-hitter Anderson. Now it is first and third, and first pitch swinging. Cleanup hitter Sam Boudreau, and Boudreau, the catcher for BG, swings through that one. It is now first and third, and the catcher for BG, at Bedford is signaling to his middle infielders what they want to do if Anderson takes off. And to answer our question about whether it mattered whether it was first and third before that ground ball, yes, because BG would already have a run in. Catcher can't find it, no advance by either runner, just that was momentary behind the plate. Momentary loss of sight of the ball by Kyle Levine, but it was right there and wise for nobody to go. But Aiden Coyne would have probably scored on that double play ball, potential double play ball, had he already been at third base. The question is, will he score with one out here? That one misses outside, a good take by Boudreau, the big catcher for Bishop Gurdon. A couple of big catchers in your picture frame right now. The right-handed batting. Sam Boudreau and the uh, catcher Kyle Levine for Bedford. There goes the runner, and it's fouled off to the right. So it'll be two balls and two strikes. Key pitch sequence coming up here. Blake Murray, the Bedford starting pitcher, in a jam in the bottom of the first inning of a scoreless game here in this Tournament contest, seven innings, single elimination format. At stake, the first run of the ball game, potentially in the form of Aiden Coyne at third base, just 85 feet away. In the dirt, outside, good block by Levine. Not running on that one. Was Anderson. Taylor Prue is on deck, the right fielder for Bishop Gurdon. He would love to see his teammate, Sam Boudreau, knock in the first run. There goes the runner, outside, taken for a ball. Hesitation by the catcher. I think he might have had trouble getting out of his glove, or else it was ball four anyway. No throw was necessary. Coin holds at third base. We've got the bases loaded now and one out. Taylor Prue is up. Number 17 playing right field today for the Cardinals. Golden opportunity here for BG to take a lead. They lost to Bedford in their only meeting of the regular season, 13 to three. That's a high curveball, looked like, that just Murray did not get near on top of. And Levine had to stand up to receive it. One ball, no strikes, the pitch. Hard ground ball, one chop. He's gonna come home with it. Out at home, 
two outs. Coyne is forced out at home plate, and Bedford is one out away from getting out of a giant first inning jam. Lead off walk to Aiden Coyne. Followed up by a single on a hit and run just about by uh, their, their two hitter, Stephen McClendon. Anderson bounded into a fielder's choice at second. Coyne advancing to third. A walk to Boudreau and then Another fielder's choice and no runs in yet. As Jake Mitchell, the third baseman, bats with two outs and the base is full. Takes it on the outside corner. Borderline call and Murray gets it. Instead of 3-0, and oh, it's going to be 2-1. and one. To the left-handed batting, Jake Mitchell in a key spot here. Hard hit, ground ball toward the right side, into right field for a base hit. They're going to wave home the trail runner, but he wasn't paying attention and wasn't really running hard enough. And the third base coach is going to have a little talk, I believe, with Sam Boudreau about going harder into the bag. BG coach clearly wanted him to score on the two-out single from second base. Instead, it's just the one run. And coming through in the clutch was Jake Mitchell with the second hit of the inning for the Cardinals. Batter now is Matt Debalt, the first baseman. Still a great RBI opportunity with two outs. That one's high and a good take. It's one and one. Bases are loaded with Cardinals as they've nearly had the whole lineup come to the plate here in the first inning. Eight hitter on deck. There's a ball in the dirt. Two balls in one strike. To the ball. Huskily built right-handed batter, Matt Thiebaud. Chance to drive in some runs here with two outs. Hard hit to center, sinking fast for a base hit. One run is in. They're going to hold up the trail runner. Good throw from center to the cutoff, man. That would have been a close play at home, if not an out. But another two-out single for the Cardinals, and they're up two to nothing. Kind of doing it the hard way here. One runner at a time. One solid single, all with two outs. But they're getting it done as now the eight hitter is up there. And it's Noah Therian. Noah Therian is the batter. Designated hitter in the eighth spot and a conference on the mound for the Bulldogs. Blake Murray has been in trouble since the very start of the inning with the walk to Aiden Coyne. Bedford nearly turned a double play in the middle of all that, but the good hustle by the trail runner Anderson to get on base and make it just a fielder's choice was a key to keeping the inning alive till later when they got two, two out clutch base hits to plate some runs. Two nothing, Bishop Gurdon has jumped out ahead in this state tournament game, single elimination, having lost to Bedford earlier in the season, 13 to three. At that point, their record was 11 and two, the Cardinals. They do come in here, the higher seed. Pitch. At the letters for a strike. Up and in. Noah Therian, the eight hitter in the lineup, batting as the designated hitter in this one. Looks at a fastball outside, and it's one ball and one strike. Blake Murray kicks and throws. Way outside. Kind of shaking his head after that one. And it's two balls in one strike. Noah Therian awaiting the 2-1. Base is loaded, two outs here in the first inning. Gets jammed, it's a pop-up. Is it playable? Levine's trying to find it and he does. Nice play by the Bedford catcher who didn't have a lot of time to get under that one. And it's a big out because that leaves the bases loaded. Bishop Girton does get two runs. May have left a lot more on the table 
We'll find out how much that matters as the game progresses. Well, one of those runners to score. Stephen McClendon, the starting pitcher, will have to collect his glove and go back out onto the hill. To continue to try his skill against this Bedford lineup. It'll be the five, six, seven hitters due up for the Bulldogs here in the top of the second inning. McClendon's got his uh, choice of baseballs to warm up with. So I'll see, recapping that bottom of the first inning. For Bishop Gurdon, the leadoff walk to Coin, Single by McClendon. Fielder's choice by Anderson. Walk to Boudreaux. Fielder's choice by Prue. As uh, Coin was cut down at home, five to two. Actually, Steve McClendon was at first, and he got fielder's choice at second. That was good for the pitcher to come off the fielder in that top uh, bottom of the first, so he gets some more rest. And um, it was Anderson who reached on the fielder's choice that came around to score. So uh, clutch singles, though, in that inning for the Cardinals. Mitchell and Debo. And that made it a 2 nothing game. So here we go to the top of the second inning. And the five hitter in the order is Kyle Levine, the big catcher leading it off for Bedford. And he checks his swing on a ball just above the zone. It's two balls in one strike. Stephen McClendon. Trying to follow up the two runs that BG scored with a stop. Very high and very right at the right fielder. <laughs> That's a tough sun. You can see the shadows are right in almost line with the sun there, but he uh, it's very high in the sky right now here at uh, about 2.30 on a Saturday afternoon, June 1. But a nice uh, catch made out there. Ball one to the six hitter in the Bedford order. Taylor Prue, the right fielder for uh, Bishop Gurdon, making easy work of that. That's strike one. So. Clinton continuing to work quickly. The 1 1 pitch is inside. Avery Mousseau, the right fielder for Bedford, has the count in his favor. Two balls and one strike. One of many left handed batters in this lineup for the Bulldogs. Three balls and one strike now as uh, McClendon tries to reset and not lose the batter, as they say, by walking him. Stevens pitch is right there on the outside part of the plate. A little bit of a grimace by Mousseau, who thought maybe it was outside with the tail movement on the ball, but no. The 3 2. Swung on and missed strike three. It looked like it might have been low, but Mousseau was going after it, and he goes down swinging. So that'll bring up the designated hitter for Bedford, Jacoby Collins. Ground ball softly back to the pitcher. McClendon's going to run it over, underhanded, and that is the out that ends the inning. A very impressive 1-2-3 inning recorded by BG pitcher Stephen McClendon, and we go to the bottom of the second. 2-0, BG leads it. Here at Holman. So in the bottom of the second, Bishop Gurton will have their 9-1-2 hitters due up. 
Another bite at the apple for the top of the order for Bishop Gurdon, who sent eight, eight batters to the plate in the bottom of the first. Had the bases loaded as the inning concluded. They did score two. So this will be Ryan Bue, the right, uh, the center fielder for the Cardinals. Ryan Bue, B-U-E. I believe it is. Is it right? Is it Ryan Bue, Tom? I'm Bue, trying. yeah, yeah, Bue. So the the strikeout, the second out of the inning. Yeah. All set up by that low fastball call that I thought was a ball. I thought it was a strike. <laughs> yeah. I, was right, I was close to the uh, Oh, you were? I was right down oh, there in the corner. I thought it was low. I okay. thought it was low. I, th I thought the argument was about whether yeah. it was on the plate or not. I thought okay. it was low. Yeah. So what did he do in the next low pitch? He had to go after it. He had to. He felt like he did. Right, exactly. But he was even more out of the zone, though. But if McClendon, right. Yes, it was. But yeah. if McClendon gets that low call, it's going to be a, a tough day for the Bedford hitters. Right. And Three balls and two strikes. Yeah, he's obviously having a problem with yeah, the strikes. Yeah, because out. this is the nine hitter, Tom, and you do, you've got to get him. The thing is, is right, when, you before, don't, when you don't throw that hard, which he doesn't normally, it seems, you know, you've got to command the strike zone. If you're not able to, you're in big trouble. Oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah, he's got, I, don't, I, I think he's lo not long for this game. I, I, uh, Blake I Murray doesn't have it, uh, it appears, in this one. Lead off walk for the Cardinals here in the bottom of the second inning. That'll bring the top of the order back. Yeah, to the you plate. just walk number nine, so. And it's Aiden Coyne who walked to begin the offense for Bishop Gurton in that bottom of the first inning. Tell you what, Bue has the biggest lead I have seen in quite a while in high school baseball. He's got, as they would say in the old artificial turf days, uh, two feet off the... Yeah, he's going. He's got a great lead and a good jump and a better throw. Ryan Levine with a laser shot, the second. And he guns down Bue by a lot. That ball was on the bag. Ryan Levine's got kind of a hesitation before he lets it go. I gotta say, he almost looks like he's having trouble getting the handle on the ball, but then the results were something else. Ground ball to the right side, slowly hit. Second baseman charges and gets the speedy coin by a running step. So two quick outs on two pitches. A caught stealing and a ground out gets Blake Murray back on track suddenly. Pitcher was struggling and two pitches later, he's got two outs. You would have thought with that big lead, he would have had a... Yeah. Just didn't oh, have Oh, boy, he got gunned down by a lot. Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> so credit Ryan Levine on that out. And uh, there's a pair of catchers standing next to each other again, I think. No, it's Stephen McClendon, McClendon, the starting pitcher's pitcher. up there, yep. And... Who singled his first time up. Singing yes, he did. Single. He went to right bloop, field. Bloop, field. Bloop single to right. My assessment on that, Tom, that bloop to right when Aiden Coyne Could got, have been caught. He, he, well, he lost, I think he lost sight of it. Maybe. I mean, it looked but, like he, you know, he hesitated. because he, he had a long way to run. He, he hesitated, but he stopped. He put the brakes on right away. But here's the thing. If you're Aiden Coyne and you're 90 feet away and the, the, the fielder's going to be that close, you're going to be dead anyway. You might right. as well go to third. You might as well just go to third because you're going to be out anyway. But he stopped at second, and then on the ensuing ground out, he went to third, but he would have been already there. It was a, a nearly double play in the middle there. Coyne ended up getting uh, forced out at home. Why would, you, why would you send him to third? Well, he's gonna, if he tries to... If he tries to... If, he tries to if the ball's the caught, he's going to be if out. If he tries to make the catch, if he makes the catch, you're going to be doubled up. Yeah, right. so you might as well just keep going. It so doesn't I mean, matter. I, I disagree. What, what, why, so why, why create an out? Why create an out? When no, you, you say have? if he catches it, he's going to be out anyway. Well, he's he's going to doubled he's, off the inning. He's not going to be. He's not going to get. He's not having time to get back to the bag. Right. So you figure he's on his way already. So you might as well keep going. Yeah. Base. I understand. Yeah, that's that. it. I see that. That, yeah, I've actually been being, in that situation. But before. if you notice in that first inning, they were very cautious on the base pass. They oh, did they not were too send, cautious. Sent T.J. at, at uh, the coach at third base did not 
DJ Sheedy did not send anybody around. He tried to send Sam Boudreau, but he was jogging into right, the base. Right. He talked to him after it. He was waving his arm, yeah. but he wasn't going like he wanted to, to score from second. Ground ball of the second baseman. Tough play to his right and makes it. Nicely done. Bedford showing off the defense in this inning. The second that's a big one. Yeah, that was not an easy play. Yep, that's a big one. And, and Zach Fletcher to his right. Yep. And Blake Murray gets new life on the mound. Yes. New life. We thought he was yep. on the ropes. Totally. Yep. See, what I do with coin, I bunt him. I have him bunt. Bunt for a base hit. Yep. Make Bedford that's make an a idea. Play. Yep. And then, and then you get your big hitters up two, three, four, five, and you get something going. Instead, it's a caught stealing a ground, two ground outs. And two tough plays for Fletcher at second base. He had to charge one to get the speedy coin and then go way to his right on a sizzling ground ball to get McClendon. So three hard-earned outs for the Bedford Bulldogs. They've got to feel good about themselves going to bat here in the top of the third. Of course, now the pressure on Steve McClendon not to let the bottom of the order have anything. To, to not let the top of the order get back up here until the fourth inning, maybe. As he's going to be working to, I believe, the seven, eight, the six, the eight yeah, and nine hitters. Eight, nine hitters, and then you go once. And yeah. You need eight, nine out, and then you yeah. don't want to give Bedford that early second look. Right. In a seven inning game, that's huge. As we mentioned, uh, Earlier game, 11 o'clock, took less than two hours to play. They had posted the results on the website before 1 p.m. I was, wonder if we could be so lucky. With that. I, <laughs> four to one win I for... I got another game to go to after this. Oh, you do. Jam shot toward the third baseman, and he's up with it. Whoa. Good grab by Thibault to keep that in the infield. <laughs> and uh, one up, one pitch, one down here in the... That's just it. Top Make your pitches third. economical if you're McClendon. So a high school kid gets tired fast, John. They they, yeah. they show it right away. So when it when it, when it happens. So Nick Davidi, the third baseman, was retired there with that ground out, and here comes Ryan Giuliano, the first baseman for the Bulldogs. Takes one in the inside corner, gives the umpire kind of a look that he thought it was inside, but it's 0-1. He is the shortstop for the Bulldogs. Giuliano, where's number three? He's down on the count as working both sides of the plate was McClendon, right on the edges, inside, outside, 0-2. Oh as they set up on the outside corner again, it's down the middle, but oh. a mishandle, and, yep, and he's an going to be on. Yep. E1. Let and the nine hitter run. You're going to want that one back. Yep. Guarantee it. You cannot open the door against this Bedford team. Ouch. Yep, that's an easy play. And instead, what happened? He backed up on it. A little bit. Yep. And yep. that cost him. Hits the mound. When it hits the mound, it can make any kind of bounces. Charge that ball. Go right after it. Of course, as you can see, there's that dirt strip between home plate and the mound. And it kind of wreaked havoc with that ball as uh, Clendon was a bit hesitant on it. Stayed back a bit. And the ball played him, as they say. So Giuliano's on first in a 2-0 game. Bishop Gurton with that lead and back to the top of the order. Laden with left-handed batters for Bedford. Michael Pratt is the, the hitter. They would love to get on the scoreboard here in the third inning. That's a fastball that misses away. Second time through for the Bulldogs. Ground ball toward the middle and into center field for a base hit. First and second as Pratt bangs one through the middle. He grounded it out his first time up, but he's one for two. Now the two hitter in the order, Zach Fletcher for Bishop Gurdon. He also grounded out to begin the ball game. All right, first half of the first inning. Of course, BG would love an inning-ending double play here. There's one out, but they have, they have to deal with the uh, 
Top batters in the lineup for the Bulldogs. That's foul tipped into the mitt by Fletcher. Strike one. Two hits apiece. BG does now have an error recorded against them and the mishandle by McClendon on the comebacker. And a flinch, you saw the umpire think about it. The right arm stayed down and it's one ball and one strike. Just missing low was McClendon. Quality pitch there as he tries to, again, work it in and out against these Bedford hitters. That one's on the upper outer corner of the plate and Fletcher fouls it off. So McClendon staying aggressive within the zone has the count in his favor. One ball and two strikes for the Bishop Girton right-hander. Trying to protect a 2-0 lead. There's one out, but two on here for Bedford. That one's well outside. Looked like it might have been a changeup. And it's 2-2. Two and two. Bedford with Ryan Giuliano, the nine hitter at second base, and Michael Pratt at first. That one also misses outside, and it's three balls and two strikes. Let's see if the Bedford coaching staff will dare start the runners here with one out. First and second on a 3-2 pitch. They stay put, and that's ball four. They'll walk their way full. And that's the three hitter now, Trevor Anibal, who singled sharply to left his first time up, batting with the bases loaded. A chance to tie it up with one swing here, or better. For Trevor Anibal, who plays second base for Bedford, but batting in that key three spot. Bases loaded, McClendon staring down the gun barrel here. That one's high. And a pitching visit, a mound visit for the Cardinals in a key spot in the game. The heart of the order due up for the Bulldogs, trailing two to nothing. McClendon in the heart pounding jam here. Space is loaded and one out. Leading two to nothing. Of course, the potential tying run standing at second base in the person of, of Pratt, Michael, who runs well, leadoff batter in the order for the Bulldogs. Well, Trevor Anibal started to walk toward his third base coach, but no words are necessary, I think, with a 1-0 count and your three-hitter up there and the base is full in a tournament game. He just needs hard contact. And McClendon, of course, hoping that he gets a miss hit or him to hit it right at somebody. That's high. A little adrenaline on that fastball. Two balls and no strikes and nowhere to put him, as they say as Trevor Anibal awaits the pitch from Stephen McClendon. That's a nice one on the outside corner, two and one. Even if you're swinging away on 1-0, 2-0, 0 that's not the one you want to go after. And they're going to go right back to the corner if they can get it. And it's a foul. Another good pitch from McClendon. Working the outside corner with something on it. Not an easy ball to square up for Anibal as he fouls it off to the right of the seating bowl here at Holman Stadium. A beautiful Saturday afternoon, June 1 of 2019, a key spot in the game. Two balls, two strikes, one out, base is loaded. Bishop Girton leading two to nothing for the moment. The 2-2 two -two pitch on the way and just getting a piece of that. Looked like a changeup or a slow curve that McClendon took a lot off of. And Anibal stays alive, fouling it back. Fielders trying to stay on their toes here. What could be a really key sequence in this game. Middle infielders for the Cardinals would love to turn two in an ideal scenario. The pitch, very hard, high, and foul to right. And we'll redo the 2-2 uh, two -two again. McClendon not wanting to go full on the three-hitter for Bedford. He's been working that outside part of the plate pretty good. Since he got to two strikes, two balls and two strikes, we'll do it again. Stephen McClendon, the long set, now is going to reset as he steps off the rubber. High drama moment here at Holman. The pitch popped up foul back of us. And a battle is going on here between the ace right-handed for the Cardinals and the Number three hitter for Bedford. 
Stephen McClendon versus Trevor Annabal. Annabal one for one. He sizzled one in the shortstop hole for a base hit his first time up. A one pitch at bat. This has been anything but. The 2-2's two on the way. Fouled off his foot. And the traditional walk it off advice shouted from the Bedford dugout. <laughs> As uh, everybody gives Trevor Annabal time to recover from that, but he seems to be already ready to go. Quick mound visit. Umpire went for a walk. Asked him if he's all right, and he digs right back in there. Annabal stands right on top of the plate. His right toe, his big right toe might even be over the line in front of the catcher. His hands are over the dish. He is just daring McLennan to come inside. He missed high. Strike three, he got it. What a pitch by Stephen McClendon. It might have been a curve, a changeup or something that had some gravity to it, and it came down in a spot where it was called strike three. Annabal thought it might have been high out of the hand, and he got fooled. So caught looking, two down, bases loaded. McClendon to face the cleanup hitter now, and he paints. Strike one. Great pitch by Stephen McClendon. He's made about six great pitches in a row, but can he get out of the jam? Jake Nakami has a chance to do damage, and he's out in front of that changeup. And right now, McClendon is dealing, as they say. He's got an 0-2 count in his favor. Will he dare to go after Jared Nykam and try to strike him out on three straight pitches? Let's see. The 0-2's on the way. And he missed outside and low. Nykam taking that one all the way. Saw it was outside. Bedford with the bases loaded and three batter up there. A caught looking, and now McClendon one strike out away, one strike away from getting out of a major jam. And that one just outside. The ump took a good long look. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch, hard hit to right. A line drive's gonna get down for a hit. Two runs are gonna score. This game is tied. Two, two. Big hit. Jared Nakem. Ball left his bat. There looked like there might be a chance for a running catch coming in on the ball, but it sank fast in front of Girton's right fielder, and it's two out magic for Bedford. They have tied this game two to two, and as Tom mentioned, it is a haunting error now that it was potential to be a haunting error, and it certainly was as uh, Giuliani, the nine hitter, reached on a soft comebacker to Stephen McClendon that he mishandled, and that started the wheels in motion for Bedford's top of the order. And it finally resulted after much angst and difficulty for the Bedford offense, they got their big hit, and they have tied the game 2-2 here in the third inning. It seems so unpredictable and yet so predictable at the same time, those costly errors in the bottom of the order in these New Hampshire High School baseball tournament games. There goes the runner way early. This could be problems for BG. The runner goes home and they're gonna get the third run. The go ahead run for Bedford no matter what happens in this rundown has been recorded out number three, but at a cost. 3-2, the Bulldogs lead it as the rundown is successful. Jared Nakam is gonna get credited with two runs batted in, but he had a direct hand in all three as he got in that rundown. And it is a lead now for the Bulldogs as BG with the pressure on their offense coming to bat in the bottom of the third inning, which was Pretty much a disastrous third inning in the end for Girton. As Stephen McClendon got that really tough strikeout of the three hitter in the Bedford lineup with the bases loaded and yet they could not come up with the third out before three runs came across. So Bedford in the driver's seat right now. 
with a starting pitcher that has not looked comfortable at all. But working with a lead at the moment, had some great defense played around him. <laughs> a long, drool, cool drink of water. That's what I'm talking about. Jim McLean's our cameraman here on Nashua ETV. Welcome to our BC TV viewers as well. So Blake Murray, the right-handed starter for Bedford, floats one in about shoulder high and offering at that one. Was uh, Brett Anderson. Bedford fans wanted that strike call. They don't get it. It's one and one. Working quickly, Blake Murray to Anderson. High and deep to right. Right fielder going back, and he will make the catch one step shy of the warning track. Not quite getting all of it was Anderson. It started high in the zone, if it was even a strike, and he hammered it, but just one step shy of the warning track. It's 3-11 down the right field line here. That was closer toward that little alleyway where the vehicles come on here. At Holman, top of the zone strike there. About as hard as Blake Murray can throw it right there to Sam Boudreau. The catcher for the Cardinals takes strike one. And a floater outside in the dirt. Kyle Levine, nice backstop play just for practice. Nobody on base here in the bottom of the third inning. BG staring up at a 3-2 deficit now. Blake Murray's pitch. That's going to catch the inside corner. Slow curve, finding the zone. And freezing up Boudreaux just a little bit. A pitch where if you're seeing two or three of those in a row, you're thinking about jacking that one over the left field wall. But the element of surprise. Mixing up your pitches. Blake Murray trying to battle here in a game where he didn't seem to have his command in the first few innings working in the third and now he's a pitch away from walking Boudreaux Taylor Prue on deck and if he reaches Jake Mitchell the 3-2 oh he swung it probably ball four Sam Boudreaux enticed to go after that one because well halfway it looked like a strike and then it kind of faded on him and it is a strikeout swinging. So two down in the third. A fly out and a strikeout. And here is Taylor Prue. Strike called over the outside corner. 0 and 1. Prue talking to the ump for a moment before he gets in there. Well, Ryan Levine, the catcher, set up in the Tony Pena stance where you throw your leg out and kind of sit down looking for it outside on the corner, and he got it up and in, so he didn't get the call. Pulled foul. Some would say that's about all you can do with that pitch. A slow curve inside off the plate. One ball and two strike is, is the count. on Taylor Prue. That one's high. Two balls and two strikes. Levine trying to coax his pitcher to keep the ball down. Has not been successful with that Tony Pena stance I mentioned as the catcher. Not easy to do, too. You have to be young and limber. Strike three. No argument at all from Prue. And it is a 1-2-3 inning for Blake Murray. That was a third inning like the coaches dream about for the Bulldogs. They put up three runs 
All three coming with two out, and then their pitcher, who had been struggling, goes one, two, three through the middle of the order for Bishop Gurdon. So a turn of the tables here in this tournament game at Holman as we go to the top of the fourth inning. Bedford batting with house money now, leading three to two. A much different story than it was midway through the top of the third inning as we go to the fourth in a seven inning contest. Nice turnout in the stands here at Holman for a beautiful Saturday afternoon contest, a two o'clock start. We're just under an hour into the game and it's been tight. Bedford were one in five to start the season, including a 16 to six loss at Keene in game one of the spring of 2019. So not a great start. They've been in 11 and two since though, with only two close one run losses since then to Goffstown and Exeter during the season. That 11 and two run included a 13 to three 10 run victory over these BG Cardinals on May 9. And BG trying to make it a spring sweep here if they come up with this tournament win. Leading three to two entering the top of the fourth trying to add on some runs. to right, sinking fast for a base hit. Ryan Levine, big right-handed batter, had flied fairly deep to right his first time up, and you know, you're thinking about that as a right fielder, you're playing him fairly deep again, and then he goes and hits it in front of you. Lead off batter aboard for the Bulldogs here in the fourth inning. And Mosseau is up. Mosseau. Swung and missed at strike three. Ground ball through the right side. Base hit. And thinking about going to third and then thinking better of it was Levine's got to dive back as Aiden Coyne makes a bid to catch the catcher flat-footed, but not. First and second, two batters aboard on two base hits to right. A bloop and a smash of a ground ball to begin the fourth. So Jacoby Collins up there, the right-handed batter. Grounded back to the pitcher his first time up. Takes ball one. The 1-0 from McClendon, strike one in the count. One and one to well, interesting, just checked his, uh, looked like it was wristband, like a quarterback would check for plays. It is a sacrifice bunt, and it's gonna go pitcher to the second baseman covering. Sacrifice is successful for Bedford, so with one out, they have runners in scoring position. As Jacoby Collins gets it done, textbook style, to the right side of the infield. Stephen McClendon had no thought to go to third with that even with the not so fleet of foot catcher Levine running. And now with one out and runners in scoring position, the batter is Davidi. Timeout is called by the catcher for Bishop Gurdon. He's trying to get a read in the dugout, what they want to do. Nick Davidi files the first offering off to the right, screen, 0-1. Gonna watch the Bruins game tonight, Jim? Jim McClain says, oh yeah, and I am too. And we all are into the Stanley Cup Finals right now. For the record, if you're watching this 20 years from now and 10 years from now, what are you talking about? You know, Bruins and St. Louis Blues, game three, series tied 1-1. Does not get any more exciting than this except for this situation. Infield in, 0-2 count on Nick Davidi. The third baseman for Bedford trying to 
bang it through the infield and maybe take a three-run lead here. Up 3-2. Ground ball toward the mound. Knocking it down as McClendon checks the runner. Throws the first. A scoop and out at first base. What a nice pick at first base. To save a run or runs. There's a lot of territory down the right field line. And if... Uh, Matt Diebold doesn't dig that ball out of the dirt. There's all kinds of problems. Instead, it's two outs and still second and third, and it ends up being a good play by the BG defense. The knockdown by McClendon, a little bit of panic in the throw. He short hopped it, but Matt Diebold made a nice dig, and it's a chance here for BG to keep the game where it is. Strike called on the outside corner. Of course, Bedford got those huge two out base hits, or our two out base hit and a, a rundown to score three runs in the, in the previous inning. That one's a strike on the outside corner as well. Kind of a look of consternation from Noah Therian, the, no, excuse me, um, the nine hitter for Ryan Giuliano for Bedford. Looking back at the umpire, strike three, foul tipped into the mitt. And a three pitch strike out there of the nine hitter by McLennan. He gets the job done. He holds Bedford scoreless there in the top of the fourth inning. So it is still a one-run game. Going to the bottom of the fourth, and Blake Murray is back out there for the Bulldogs. The winner of this one will play the winner of Dover-Portsmouth, a 4 o'clock game on this day where it's, uh, it's just hit 3 o'clock here at Holman Stadium on a sunny Saturday, June 1, Blake Murray offering a assortment of soft stuff, really, that has been effective, though, in this game. Holding Bishop Gurdon to just two runs. BG had the bases loaded a couple of times in the bottom of the first. When they sent eight batters to the plate, they scored two runs. They had a great chance to score three, four, or even five or six runs in that inning, but somehow Bedford found a way to limit the damage, and it is uh, very beneficial to the starting pitcher, Blake Murray. That's a strike on the outside corner. Very little working inside hitters. It's happened. There's been a, even a caught looking inside in this game, but mostly you see Ryan Levine set up on the outside corner and get the strike calls. And the same way, the other way, for Bishop Gurdon. They've been working the outside corner well as well. So it's an 0-2 count. As Murray kicks and delivers. Pop-up right side behind the infield. Zach Fletcher is going to call it and makes easy work of that. And again, this is the inning. You've got to take advantage of that, that escape artistry by yeah. Clendon. Well put. You escape know? artist, yep. yeah. And, and yep. Here's another thing where the lineup changes may have hurt. I mean, the, obviously the error, you know, opened the door for 300 runs. How much did that haunt? Like oh, you said. It'll, it'll kill them, you know. But. Strike on the outside corner again. The RBI hit was on, a, I believe, a 2-2 pitch. He had him 0-2. But Anderson doesn't normally play right field, at least not when, I, when I'm there. And he froze. He I mean, froze. It looked, it looked like it was could have been caught. It, it definitely looked like it could have been caught. Let's say Mookie would have had it. Well, I, I think somebody charging, yeah, probably, but he froze. But, yeah, he did. It was hard hit, but it, it sank fast. It was hard fast hit, but it, 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 it was it up in the air a long time. It sure was. It looked like it was catchable. Yeah. And Nakem, Jared Nakem, who hit that ball, got the two RBIs. He had a direct hand in the third run because he got in the rundown. Right. Well, that's a smart play. But, yeah. You know, McClendon should have just let him go to second. Yeah. It the was worry. it was a costly run, uh, well, a costly yeah, out. Two mistakes. Out. One mental, one one physical. 
Blake Murray, the one-two, excuse me, check swing over the and screen. See, Murray right now is, is he's playing with house money. I mean, he's just throwing softballs up there. So, and the <laughs> Cardinals are over swinging. So, if I'm them, I, let, I make him come in hard and see if he has control of that fastball. And I, I put, keep the bat on the shoulders. Well, that, there's a base hit to left. So, BG has a one-out base runner aboard is Matt Diebald, who had that great dig, by the way, that uh, low throw by McClendon. Very big dig. I thought he was going to be safe with that throw because I'm, I'm watching it from the other angle, and I said, uh-oh. So. You imagine that gets by him. That's right field at Holman. Two runs. Two runs. Two runs, and it's a 5-2. Yeah. Game, and, and essentially, I would say almost over. Yeah. Big, big defensive play by Matt Diebald. Now he gets a base hit. He's on it first. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know if I dare run him against no. his catcher. No, conservatively, but now it's a double play ball to second. They one, flip to one, two. two. Uh, four, six, three. Inning ending, double play. So we go to the top of the fifth. Bedford still ahead, three to two. And there's another thing. Darian hasn't really hit all that well the games that I've been at. He's a good pitcher. But your DH is, instead of hitting cleanup, is hitting H. Yeah, and if you missed the open, Tom, you mentioned that uh, they're missing a player. They're missing player Alex from... George. Who reportedly, according, you know, told the coach he was unavailable to play today. So He's uh, Southern New Hampshire University bound. I, I believe he is. Yeah, I think but so. But I mean, yeah. um, but he they could use him. He would have started at DH. And hit cleanup. The whole lineup would have changed. Yeah. yeah. Because what would have happened is Terrian would have been in left. Anderson would have been at first. Yeah. And probably T-Ball would have been in right, I think. I'm not sure. I can't say who the right fielder. I'm not sure. Or maybe Poole would have been in right. I'm not positive. Tom, I'm going to tell minute, you this. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anderson's playing left field. Yeah. So Poole throws on that play. And oh, he normally Proof. plays right. Poole throws. And he okay. normally plays yeah. right. Yeah. So my apologies, yeah. Anderson is in left. So that's my mistake. But right field this time of day is a tough sun field, so. It's a tough place to play, it is. Yeah, no doubt about yeah. it. I guess that's the uh, catch that Andrew Benintendi made off of uh, Bregman in the World Series there, uh, or the uh, ALCS. Mm -hmm. He came in, he dove, he took that ball off the carpet. See, I don't That's think good. that he would have had to dive to make that play. <laughs> really? I don't. I really don't. That's funny. Here's a tough play right <clears throat> here. A flip. Got it. Yeah, good spring training fundamentals there. Matt Diebold and Steve McLennan get the job done. They get the leadoff batter here in the top of the fifth. And here we go. You get two, three, four, and that's what did the damage last inning. Yeah. Although you had to think with the call, third strike, <clears> he had a chance and just could not, and an 0-2 on the cleanup man and could not put him away. I mean, Bedford, you know, for those of you watching in Bedford, you know how relentless your program is in terms of the players you have. Strike athletically, call. Athletically, they take no prisoners. They get opportunities. They don't waste them. Interesting. The right fielder for BG is a little bit more shallow this inning, Tom. Working both sides of the plate, Stephen McClendon has the count in his favor. One and two on Zach Fletcher, dangerous left-handed batter. Top of the order hitter for Bedford. And he takes a ball low. Good bid there. BG fans certainly wanted the punch-out call. They didn't get it. The 2-2 two -two offering is on the way. Swung on and missed, strike three. So this two the, down. This is the McClendon we saw in the first inning. So here's Anibal, who singles sharply the first pitch he saw in this game, his first time up, and then the second time up was just a battle. It was about an eight, nine, ten pitch at bat before he finally got caught looking for strike three. And just when you thought McClendon was out of the woods, talked about that big two-out hit by Nakem, and then the rundown to steal another run. Two-out, two-strike hit. Yeah. Rope to left, so Anibal's two for yeah, three. That's a curveball in the inner half of the plate. You could pull easily, and if you can get it uh, sharply hit, then you've got a base hit. So a two-out base runner for Bedford. And here's Nikem, who uh, roped it to right his last time up. 
And you see Prue is playing deep again. Respect, respecting that power, I guess. He wants to keep it in front if he can and prevent a two out double that would score a run. That one just misses, apparently. 1-0 as Bishop Girton has a pitcher warming up in the pen. As does Bedford. They have a pitcher on the mound in their side, their bullpen. So you would imagine what happened in a single elimination tournament game. Quarterfinal round here. Bedford enjoying a 3-2 lead for the moment. Batting in the top of the fifth. There goes the runner and the foul off to the left. He'll have to go back. That one bounces down on the concrete concourse here at Holman. Clendon looking in for the sign. He's got two outs, a 1-2 count on Nakem. There goes the runner. It's like a pitch out. The throw to second base, and it's in. He's out. He didn't even slide. I was going to say he better go tag him again because from this angle, there was no guarantee that he was out, but apparently got tagged a step shy of the, of the base, and the Bedford third base coach is just not happy at all with Zach Fletcher for not sliding uh, uh, Trevor Annabelle for not sliding on that attempt. I thought he had the base stolen halfway down the line. It looked like, hey, he's got the huge uh, jump and good speed and even with a good throw. And there was a little bit of a, a struggle, it looked like, for... Uh, BG catcher Sam Boudreau to get that out of his glove and get it down to second base, but he got the job done, certainly. Ends up being a three-batter inning for Bedford. And good work by Stephen McClendon. It's the only problem has been that third inning, and it was with one out, a comebacker to the mound, a soft hop that just went awry on McClendon that allowed the nine batter in the order, Ryan Giuliano, to reach on the error by the pitcher, and then the, the floodgates uh, opened later on in the inning. 3-2, three, three runs scored in that inning after that error, which would have made it two out and nobody on. So Blake Murray back out there. It's sort of unbelievable that he lasted to this point in the game, but I guess people who know him would say otherwise. A fly out on the first pitch. Coming in and Blake make the play, the right fielder. Avery Mosso charging in to uh, record the out. So back to the top of the order now. Aiden Coyne up there. That was Ryan Bue that flied out to right. Coyne takes a strike. BG one run away from tying this thing up. They'd love to get their speedy leadoff guy aboard. Aiden Coyne takes a ball up and away. He walked to start things in the bottom of the first inning. Grounded out later in the game. A floater stayed inside. The fans for both teams kind of uh, oohed and odd that that wasn't called a strike. And ground ball to the third base coach. So two and two is the count now on Coyne. Trying to battle his way on base. Aiden showing off those stirrups, which seem to be a thing of the past for most players. Certainly I don't think anybody else has those showing for Curtin. The center fielder for Bedford does. Strike three called. He took a fastball inside and got frozen. He's upset with the umpire, but he's been calling that pitch all game. Two out. Great pitch by Blake Murray. Right there it appeared. Ryan Levine, the big catcher behind the dish, has been uh, framing pitches really nicely. First pitch swing is going to be fly ball to center. 
and Stephen McLennan is retired. It was about a four-pitch inning for Blake Murray, who's sailing along now as we go to the top of the sixth in a 3-2 game. Just past the hour mark here, and we are into the top of the sixth inning. Unfortunate one, two, three. BG not able to get a base runner aboard. We have a conversation going with the uh, BG coach and the uh, home plate umpire, but maybe about the strike zone, and I'm not sure. Maybe it isn't. Uh, the speculation doesn't. It doesn't seem to be going sour or anything. It's you know, of a good nature. I know in, in the, the many games that I've played over the years, we players on teams, uh, especially veteran players that have played a lot, you have conversations about the style of umpiring that day, whether the umps giving pitches on the outside corner, the inside corner, low high, uh, whether some pitches are getting called more than others, or fastballs as opposed to, say, uh, curves or something. Um, and... A conversation in this game would be along the lines of he's given the corners. He's given that inside corner to righties, outside corner to lefties, especially. Uh, be wary of that. So with two strikes, you've you got to be swinging on that. Unfortunately, Aiden Coyne was not, and he was punched out. So it's a live and learn moment in baseball land. To the top of the sixth we go. Strike called. Stephen McLennan continues to pump strikes in the zone. Again, his third inning was the only bad one. And it's costing at this point. The BG down 3-2, but still two at-bats to go, at least. The sixth and seventh innings. As Bedford looks for some insurance runs here in the top of the sixth. Great changeup by McClendon, way out in front. Strike three, swinging on Noah. I mean, uh, excuse me. Jared Nykam, who was at the plate when the caught stealing ended the previous inning. So he came back up to lead off here in the sixth inning, and he swung and missed. So Nakam, who had that big two-out hit, I believe it was a fastball that he laced with two strikes, uh, gets way out in front of a, a changeup, and uh, I think Steve McLennan's thinking that's the pitch I should have thrown when he, he got the two-run single, but it's what it could have should have always in baseball. 1-1 one, one count on big Ryan, uh, Kyle Levine. Kyle Levine, the uh, catcher, rips one just over the head of Steve McLennan, who fortunately ducked out of the way of that missile. Kyle Levine from uh, youth baseball. Hudson playing against uh, Bedford at some point, maybe uh, seven, eight years ago. So a foul tip, strike one. And the batter, Avery Musso, the right fielder for Bedford, trying to do damage with one out and one on. Golf's one the opposite way. Well foul down the left field line. They'll just leave the ball there and let a uh, Bedford reserve player will trot down and take that one out of play. No break in the action. 0-2 is the count. On Avery Mosso. Kyle Levine, no threat to steal at first base. Swung on and missed. Throw to first behind the runner, and Levine does a good job of diving back into the bag. Two out. 
Two strikeouts for McClendon, who seems to be getting stronger here as the game goes along. Of course, with the exception of that missile hit by Kyle Levine moments ago. Two down, man on first, and the pitch off the foot. You could just tell by the way he chopped it, went straight down, and then started rolling that it went off a body part. So it is strike one on Jacoby Collins, the designated hitter. Where's number 21 for the Bulldogs? Goes by Jake. He's heard some of the Bedford fans call out to the uh, Bedford batter who's in a conference now with his third base coach about some sort of strategy. Of course, everybody's mind goes toward bunt when you see a kind of a slow-footed runner at first and one out, uh, two out. Um, even with two out, um, what could you be talking about? A hit and run play, maybe? The pitch. Ground ball back to the pitcher. Had a lot of spin on him. And Clendon handles this one nicely. As he absorbs it and throws to Matt Thiebault. And it is the third out of the inning. We go to the bottom of the sixth in a one-run game. A single elimination tournament. Pressure is on. Bishop Girton's hard of the order to get a runner on board and home to tie this thing up or better. With a great pitching performance going in Stephen McClendon. A mystifyingly great pitching performance going for Bedford. Blake Murray, who had been struggling with his control early, just has been finding all kinds of ways to get Bishop Girton batters out. Continue to work your magic is what the Bedford coaching staff is saying to Blake Murray as they put him back out there for inning number six. And there is bullpen activity for Bedford. I was watching the Bedford uh, left-handed pitcher that was warming up, and uh, when he completed his warm-up tosses, he spiked the ball like, like Gronk out there. I mean, he just fired it into the ground. <laughs> and now he's trotting over to right field. So um, a fiery left-hander is playing right field for Bedford. And apparently he may be the next pitcher due into the game if needed. That is a generous strike call by the home plate umpire. That one, I think he did not get correct. If I may be so bold as to criticize. That one's even further out. Blake Murray trying to explore the expanse of the Greg Maddox strike zone here at Holman. Suddenly stretching it a bit, though, with that one. The 1-1. One, one. Hard to left, that might be fair. It's gonna be off the wall, it's a fair ball. And it's a second base with a big lead off double. Bishop Girton, that is the classic, taking what you are given and making the most of it. That was nearly a game tying home run by Brett Anderson. That was terrific hitting by Anderson who nearly had a home run. The carry on that ball a great bid for the foul pole here, which is just 3.07 from home plate. He got a, a soft one up and away and just drove it, and he is in scoring position with nobody out, representing the game-tying run, potentially. And there's going to be a timeout, and they're going to summon the right fielder to come in here and pitch. And we saw Blake Murray go an astonishing five full innings here at Holman in a game in which he struggled mightily early. Got in a giant jam in the first inning, but let up only two runs after facing eight batters. And he will give way to the lanky lefty for 
Bedford and a huge ovation from the Bedford fans here at Holman Stadium for Blake Murray, who's going to have a good memory of his performance uh, just about win or lose here at Holman Stadium on June 1, 2019, as he comes off and gives way to the lefty. It's number 20 for Bedford. He was playing left field. And this is Avery Mousseau. Mousseau into the game to pitch. Left-handed batter. He will be facing the giant part of the BG batting orders. Sam Boudreau, Taylor Prue, and Jake Mitchell. The four, five, six hitters are due up for Girton. And again, I can't say enough about what nice hitting that was by Brett Anderson to take that slow curve, and I believe it would have been called a strike on the upper outer part of the plate to the left-handed batter and just drove it nearly a home run out of here off of the bricks on the fly in left field, and it kicked past the left field. There was an easy double for Anderson. Now, he's in scoring position. If he scores, this game will be tied 3-3, and that's what Bishop Girton is all about right now, tying this thing up to give... Their fine pitcher, Stephen McClendon, a chance to continue on with his magic. So shouts of, come on, Sam. Here we go, Sam. As Sam Boudreau, the catcher for the Cardinals, stands in there with a chance to dri drive in the game-tying run. Seven hits for Bedford, four hits, none bigger than at second base. Brett Anderson with that double as they look for more hits here in the bottom of the sixth. Sam Boudreaux. Bedford beating BG 13-3 a month ago. This is a much different game. The pitch. Fastball misses and it's 2-0. Sam Boudreaux looking for something he can drive. Bedford playing Boudreaux a, a smidge to pull in center. Straight away elsewhere. Very high pop-up in the infield. And it's going to be caught by the shortstop. He didn't look all that sure of himself. He actually stole a long look at the second baseman. But in the end, Trevor Anibal puts it away for out. Actually, that's number three. Um, Ryan Giuliano, the shortstop for Bedford, makes the play. So it's one out. Now still runner in scoring position. Ground ball is gloved. It is a fair ball. Throw to first base on a hop. Gets by the fielder. And they're going to stop him at third. That is a situation where if you're playing a little bit more aggressively at second base, you are going to get to third on the throw, and then you'll get to home on the error, the missed throw at first base, but instead... Playing it rather cautiously was Anderson at third base. And it is an error by the third baseman. Good job of catching that one to start with, but not able to complete the long throw across the diamond. Nick DeViti with the diving stop. He ended up in foul territory when he got to his feet. Anderson at second base was playing it cautious, not wanting to get picked off or in a rundown, but... You'll see some runners that will, on a long throw like that, they might take off from second as soon as he releases it because it's always difficult for the first baseman to catch it and throw it all the way back to third and get the runner. But in that case, playing it cautiously, the overthrow at first base yielded only the one advance for the runner at second, two bases for the batter. So with one out, two runners in scoring position. And that one misses way outside. So Taylor Prue getting it done with the ground ball chop. And it's Jake Mitchell, the third baseman, left-handed batter, batting in a key spot. Fouled off the end of the bat. They kind of hit a pitcher's pitch there from Avery Mousseau, the lefty, going against lefty here. So with first base empty even, he still wants to get the left-handed batting. Mitchell. The pitch. That's high. 
with the fastball. Two balls and one strike. Good take by Jake. Number 10, Jake Mitchell, third baseman. In a key spot here. They're in at the corners, back in the middle of the infield, conceding the tying run. If he can hit a ground ball to the shortstop or the second baseman, instead he pops it up. The third baseman coming in, and Davidi makes the play. Two pop-ups in the inning. Proven really costly for Bishop Gurdon. Now it's coming down to two outs, needing some two-out magic. So pop to short, pop to third, mixed around an error. And the leadoff double by Anderson in danger of being wasted here unless BG can come up with something with two outs. Timeout called. They're going to put them on. It is an intentional walk. You just have to tell the umpire. Four pitches, walk, automatic, put him at first base. So he does not have to deal with pitching to the right-hander. The matchup, again, important to Bedford. They didn't want the lefty pitcher pitching to the righty batter if they could help it. And so they send Matt Deball trotting down to first base with the intentional pass. Instead, it'll be, let's see, will it be a, will it be a pinch hitter for Bishop Girton? I think they're going to get a right-handed batter up there. So in place of Noah Darien, the left-handed batting DH, it'll be number five, Billy Gagne. Billy Gagne will be the batter. His initials are BG, and he plays for BG. And will this be the moment? that Billy Gagne remembers years from now. We hope it is. The pitch, low. Bases loaded, down a run, bottom of the sixth inning. The 1-0 pitch. Fisted right side, going back for it is the first baseman, and makes the catch. And BG strands three runners aboard in the bottom of the sixth inning. Still trailing three to two. It'll be the top of the order for BG in the bottom of the seventh, but they are needing to stop Bedford in the top of the sixth to keep it a uh, top of the seventh to keep it a one-run game. What a huge jam. Avery Mousseau, the lefty reliever for Bishop Girton, just worked out of. Right there. A potential tournament game saving performance by Avery Mousseau. We'll find out later on. But right now, Stephen McClendon is back out there to continue his starting pitching performance into the seventh inning. He has outlasted his counterpart, Blake Murray, but his team trails by a run. BG has left the bases loaded a couple of times in this game, and it's, it's hurt. McClendon slipped to his knees as he released that last pitch. Does some housekeeping on the mound, on the landing area, before he resumes throwing here in the top of the seventh inning. So Bedford coming to bat here in the top of the seventh, looking for some insurance runs. First pitch swinging and banging one into right center to no man's land. It was Nick Davidi, the eight hitter in the order for Bedford, is get gets on base to start things in the seventh. One up, one pitch, one on for the Bulldogs. And now the nine hitter is up there, Ryan Giuliano, who's going to get talked to by his third base coach. And you've got to be thinking bunt in this situation where an insurance run would be huge. You have your eight 
batter in the order on base and your nine hitter up there. And a sacrifice appears to be in the offing. We'll find out. Both catchers have gunned down would-be base stealers in this game. No slouches behind the plate, so stealing your way on a second, no easy task as the throw goes over to first from McClendon. Sliding back in safely was Davidi. The pitch, bunted. It looked like it hit the batter, and he, was he, is he out? He's out. Yeah, good call, hit him. Wait a minute, are they going to say he was in the box or not? Hit the hard, hard to believe that he was fully They're in the box. They're going to talk to the umpire. It, some, somebody said, you thought it hit the bat the second time on the bounce? Bounce up and hit the bat? Oh, it'd be uh, interesting. To see it again. But, and, yeah, th but a golden opportunity, obviously. Oh. Wasted, but over-anxious at the plate. Two, three pop-ups. Three pop-ups. Three pop-ups. You know, not one, not two, but three. Three. You know? Yeah, you know, with a with a reliever who you know Mosel uh, is good, but I mean, if you get him behind an account, you have a chance to do something. Yeah, and they did have him a couple times like that. In on the grass, expecting the bunt this time, but is this still McClendon on the mat? Yes, it is. It looks like they're taking the bunt off. Yeah, it looks like it. One ball, one strike, and he's bunting this one though. Kind of surprise bunt method. Squared around real late. But that was the opportunity, it seemed, John. We'll have to see what happens when you get around to the top of the order in the bottom of the seventh. But the big key here is you've got to keep Bedford off the board. If Bedford gets any insurance runs, it's lights out, I think. And that may do it. The second baseman. Flip the second one. for one to first base. In got plenty it. of time. Yeah. Aiden Coyne guns them down on the back end. Yeah. Two out. Top of the order up there for Bedford, but much different situation than when they had that rally when they the nine hitter, soft comebacker with one out, mishandle, wheels came off in the third inning. Right. Now he's got a clean slate, two outs and nobody. And that's on. all you're looking at in this yeah. game. Really is. That third inning. It is the story right now. Ball one. <clears throat> Clinton continuing to mix his pitches, has featured primarily the fastball, but has had a good changeup mixed in. There's a fastball that's top. He's pitched well. I mean, like yeah. I said, a lot of times he's one of those guys that when you go out there, he deserves better sometimes, but he made his own mistake. Yeah. And that hurts. Yeah. And you know, Tom, uh, I'm going to say, too, that the lack of aggression on the base passes hurt BG, too. So I'm going to go back to the... Uh, to the third, the mishandled yeah. third baseman throwing first. If your if your runner at second takes off I'll, I'll, on the throw, yeah, you, you can score you on can that. You can score on that. No, yeah, no doubt about it. You've seen many games when that's happened. Oh sure. Strike call in the outside corner, but he exactly. was kind of conservative and he right. advanced one base and it ended up that was the tie run. <laughs> two balls, two strikes, two out. The pitch from McClendon is in there for strike three. Oh. Another caught looking. Stephen McClendon has been. Brilliant. All right, John Collins, I am down on the field for the bottom of the seventh. We'll see if the BG we'll see, has Tom any King. more life left in them. We'll see if the season stays alive or not. Three and three to, runs for Bedford and two for Bishop Girton. And season on the line here in this single elimination tournament game as they'll have the top of the order due up there. Aiden Coyne, Stephen McClendon, and Brett Anderson. A beautiful Saturday, June 1 of 2019. 
A day on which the Boston Bruins are playing game three of the Stanley Cup final later on in St. Louis. A series that's tied one to one right now. A lot of drama out there, a lot of drama right here. Bishop Girton one run down. Down to their last at bat here in the bottom of the seventh inning of a seven inning contest. Winner of this one will advance to play here at Holman on Tuesday, June 4 at 4 o'clock against the winner of Dover Portsmouth, a game that's being played later this afternoon. Avery Massal, the pitcher who came in and performed brilliantly in the sixth inning, is back out there to start the seventh. Number 20, Avery Masso. Ball taken low. by Ryan Bew. I misspoke, it's the 9-1-2 hitters due up for Bishop Gurdon, not the top of the order yet. So Ryan Bew feeling the pressure to get aboard here. Center fielder for Gurdon. One ball and two strikes as he fouls off that inside tight offering. Bedford's outfield playing Bew slightly to pull. Infield straight away at all positions. The pitch outside. Kind of a waste pitch there on one two by Masso, and it's an even count now. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. Kind of a floater that was down and in and tied him up. So Girton. Down to their last two outs now with their top of the order due up. Here's Aiden Coyne. Uh, caught looking his last time up. He's also walked and grounded out in this game. Avery Mousseau kicks and delivers, and it's a strike. Working quickly. Strike two. Coin hating that inside strike call. The last time up, probably doesn't like that one much better. The 0-2 pitch on the way, outside and high by a little. The 1-2 pitch is on the way. BG needs a base runner in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. A tantalizing floater there from Musso, who can throw the ball hard. 2-2 pitches on the way. Way outside and high. So will he walk him? Will he give him something to hit? Will he hit it successfully? We'll find out. A key pitch coming up here to Aiden Coyne, and the whole infield wants to talk about it. But only the catcher and pitcher get to as they back off. Maybe we want to talk about the Bruins game. Oh, what was that, what was that about? <laughs> There's nobody on base. You got a 3-2 pitch. You don't want the runner on base. It's up to the pitcher and the catcher to get the job done. And the batter. The pitch to Aiden Coyne. Rip foul. He did not watch that one and leave it up to the umpire, whether it was inside or not. He just gets rid of it, which is the thing to do in this situation. 3-2 again. Ground ball back to the pitcher. Stabbed by Masso, and he flips it to first in time. <clears throat> and a frustrating afternoon for Aiden Coyne and Bishop Girton. But Stephen McLennan has a chance to change that. <clears throat> Stephen McLennan getting an added cheer as he comes to the plate for a brilliant pitching performance. Mired only by the third inning. That's a low curve in the dirt for ball one. If he could get aboard, it would be Bert Anderson, who got that double the opposite way as last time up. And that's a strike on the inside corner. <clears throat> and, and McClendon's pleading with the fact the ball ended up in the dirt, uh, saying it was low. Apparently, the umpire did not think so. 
That one is just off the outside part of the plate. And I'll tell you what, I think maybe that little complaint that, that uh, Steven did, maybe he did it in a polite way, might have helped him on that call. Maybe a makeup call. Two and one. That one's up and away. Three balls in one strike. And I, I do not think Steve McLennan's going to swing at this pitch no matter where it is. Could be wrong. They need a base runner. The 3-1 on the way, and it's strike call at the top of the zone. Bishop Girton fans did not like the call. Bishop Girton coaching staff didn't like the call, and they're letting the home plate umpire hear about it. But it's come down to this. Three balls and two strikes here. Bottom of the seventh inning. BG trailing by a run. Top foul will do the payoff pitch again. Shout out to our BC TV viewers in Bedford watching this and also Nashua ETV viewers. You've been treated to quite a good one here today. The 3-2 pitch on the way. Swung on and missed strike three. Bedford advances in the 2019 tournament. A one-run victory here on a sunsplash Saturday afternoon. Bedford comes out on top, 3-2. There will be handshakes. Avery Masso, who just gave kind of a dismissive salute to the BG team after he got the final out, now into his good sportsmanship handshake mode as the two teams shake hands going across home plate. Bishop Girton's season comes to an end. Bedford will be back here at Holman on Tuesday, June 4 for a 4 o'clock start against the winner of Portsmouth and Dover to be played later today. Congratulations to the Bulldogs. Their fine 2019 baseball season continues. Congratulations to Bishop Girton and their players and their fans who are standing and saluting the boys who unfortunately had to come up on the short end this afternoon. For Tom King and our cameraman Jim McLean and our executive producer, Pete Johnson, I'm John Collins. Thank you for watching and saying good evening from Holman Stadium, everybody.